Now, it's my honor to introduce our first session. And it's especially special that we get to celebrate International Women's Day together with this beautiful grandmother's circle. And so we're just so honored to be joined by four beautiful grandmothers this morning who have been so kind to gift us with their time and wisdom today. We're lucky to have with us elders Edme Comstock, Doreen Healy, Violet March, and Vinya Van Overdyke, not only to participate in the circle, but also to open our symposium in a good way with a blessing this morning. So to all of our beautiful grandmothers, I offer you this tobacco and ask that you would pray for all of our champions to attend this symposium this week with open minds and open hearts so that everybody can leave empowered to continue to make their communities a healthier, more connected place. So with that, thank you so much to our grandmothers for, for being here today. Right, grandmothers, this is your cue. If you want to open us up with a blessing, feel free. You can speak in your own language all at the same time. Let <laughs> 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 Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, grandmothers. And thank you, Matt, for that wonderful introduction to the symposium. So now I guess we're heading right into the grandmother circle. So yeah, I'm very excited to welcome everybody today um, to the opening event of the Alberta Healthy Communities Symposium. Um, today's grandmother circle is all about the power of connection. And of course, uh, making it all the more significant is that we get to hear from all these beautiful ladies on International Women's Day. So today, March 8th, is a day to celebrate the amazing women in our lives and, and our communities and around the world. And so I do encourage everybody here, including the grandmothers, all of us, to take some time today to celebrate those special women in your life and let them know how much they mean to you. Women are truly powerful, and it's really great that we get to have you all here today on this special day. Um, and yes, so as a few housekeeping items, as Matt said, this session is being recorded for those who are unavailable to attend symposium today. And there will also be no Q&A at the end of this session, but I do welcome participants to type any comments you may have in the Zoom or Whova chat box. So uh, those are some housekeeping items. And uh, before we get into the, the grand scheme of things, I'd like to introduce myself and the grandmothers. So my name is Brianna Morin. Uh, I am a program officer of engagement and reconciliation with Communities Choose Well, which is a program of the Alberta Recreation and Parks Association. And I'm also honored to be your host and facilitator for today. Um, I would also like to acknowledge that I reside and am calling in from Amiskwichi, Waskaigan, which is otherwise known as Edmonton and is located here in Treaty 6 territory. Um, a little bit about me is my family on my dad's side is from Enoch Cree Nation, and that's located just west of Edmonton. So I feel very privileged as a part Cree woman that I get to continue my journey of reconciliation and learning about all the diverse Indigenous cultures within our province throughout the work that I do with ARPA and Choose Well. Um, as for our group, lovely grandmothers, there's four of them here today. So we're going to be joined um, yeah, by four multinational elders from the Treaty 7 area who will discuss a woman's perspective on the power of connection in the context of healthy eating and active living 
and how connection can help create that sense of healing at both an individual and community level. So before that, or before we move on, I do want to welcome and introduce Elder Doreen Healy to set the stage for us today. Doreen is a Blackfoot elder who is the originator of these grandmother circles, and today actually marks our fifth one. So we're on to number five, which is crazy to think. Um, so we're very excited, to, excited and lucky to have her here again with us to share a little bit about the history of the grandmother circle. So Doreen, please let us know a little bit more about these grandmother circles. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> All the times that I'm on the Zoom, I still forget to unmute. <laughs> Never You're not forget. the only one. <laughs> well, good morning to our beautiful grandmothers uh, and everyone in the audience. Uh, thank you for taking time from your busy schedules to join our grandmothers for their words of wisdom and have, who have agreed to share with all of us how do we each of our communities heal through connection? I say us because every time I listen to the grandmothers, I learn so much. Um, it's such an honor to be part of their circle. Which brings me to give you a quick background of how we got started. Um, like I'm part of the, uh, uh, the elder circle, knowledge keepers, which uh, Dr. Reg Crochu started uh, here in Calgary. And like uh, Brianna said, we're on our fifth session with the grandmothers. Uh, we picked different grandmothers to talk on different uh, areas. But the whole concept was that because I was part of this uh, group of elders and beautiful grandmothers uh, who had so much to share, and want to help young people, especially the next generation, so that they can share their wisdom and their stories uh, to help get them ready because they are going to be the next elders after us. So I reached out to uh, um, Janet and asked her, this is what I really would like to see the grandmothers do to share their knowledge and their wisdom so they can help the younger women uh, to get them to help make their journey through life a little bit easier with our with their advice and their guidance because they've been through all life and uh, are want to have so much uh, to, to share with the young people so that's when uh, beautiful Janet just grabbed it and she ran with it and here we are on our fifth session. Uh, so that uh, I really want to thank Janet for taking this, this uh, project on and, and it's working very well. So, but we need to hear and celebrate diverse voices uh, in order for reconciliation to happen. So I'm looking forward to again listening to uh, our dear grandmothers. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Doreen. That was a wonderful introduction. And for those of you in the crowd who might not know Janet, Janet is Janet Naklia from ARPA. She's our director of people and programs and maybe this would have been her face, but it's me today instead. So, <laughs> but yeah, Janet is a key, key moving part in this grandmother circle. So thank you, uh, Doreen, for pointing that out. And here we are. So um, next up, we can begin our discussion where I will introduce the grandmothers a little further and I'll introduce them in the order that they will speak. So grandmothers, you will each have the chance to respond to that same question in the order that I call your name. Um, so we'll get started. Um, today's grandmother circle is rooted in the context of HEAL, which is otherwise known as healthy eating and active living, which is a concept we use across all of the work that we do here at Communities Choose Well. Um, so that's a little bit of background, but the grandmothers, it's now your time to shine. Uh, our discussion topic today is in the context of healthy eating and active living, 
how does your community heal through connection or how do you heal through connection? And I will invite Elder Violet March to first speak to this question. Violet is a Dene Sulin elder who has been very active in Choosewell's actions surrounding environments for healthy eating in recreation settings. So Violet, how does your community heal through connection? Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Thank you. Welcome everyone. In my Dene you say ho'a, meaning welcome all. Again, you know, your question in healing through connection in this modern technology, when, well, actually, you know, this technology really, really does help me in terms of, of uh, connection. You know, I, I need to talk to Doreen or I need to talk to Edme. You know, we all support each other. If anything, anybody needs help, that is how we connect, you know, through telephone, through the Zoom, through just whatever it takes, you know, to, to communicate with each other. And when you come to healthy eating, my traditional way in Denisukhine is right from the get-go, we, we lived right on the, uh, you know, the wild meat, et cetera, et cetera. So I continue today in eating very, very healthy, um, you know, basically all organic if I could, you know, and it doesn't really happen all the time and stuff, but, um, you know, because of my upbringing, it was just so, so active, checking, going for the, you know, the snares and the fishing and the cleaning uh, of the fish and eating very, very well. And again, it's right from the grassroot, how I want many, many miles with my grandmother to go and check on the snares, to go get water, to, to do whatever it need, we needed to do for survival. Like I say, in the winter time, you just made a hole through the ice and you hold water. So that tradition today remains strongly with me. Um, even like I say, downtown Calgary and stuff, eat healthy, go for power walk, walk along the Bow River and invite when you connect with other groups, with the youths and stuff, I just really, really encourage them to, again, eat very healthy, but to get out, to get out with nature, to go for walks. You don't need all this cell phone in your ears and stuff. No, listen to the birds, listen to the water, sit along the river, you know, and that is healing. Let the sun shine on you and just, just walk and be, live in gratitude. Like this morning, thank you, Masi you know, for the great spirit, for giving me another gift of life. Share that, share that with the other people, share that with the youths and just, just you know, live in gratitude. Masi nil sini, masi nesken sin dun sinek e hot he a hot he cha if ini sini tri, like I'm grateful for all of you. And, um, you know, that's what I need to share today. Masi choked, Violet. Thank you. That was beautiful. And I totally agree. It can be different ways of connecting, whether it's through technology, which has helped us, but it is important to balance that out with eating healthy and connecting with the land and with nature. So thank you for sharing. Uh, next up, I would like to welcome and introduce Elder Edme Comstock to speak to our question. Edme is a Métis elder who has also been very involved um, with Choose Well, specifically in the Choose Well gatherings of Indigenous wellness champions. We love having her there with us. So Edme, how does your community heal through connection? Oh, and so thank you to all of you, to RPA and, and to you, Brianna and Matt and, and uh, Doreen, that's always, Wow. When I met Doreen, I was like, oh, how can I be so blessed? 
And I met Benny a long time ago and we worked together, it was wonderful. And Violet, you are a joy. You bring so much woof in it all. It, it makes the woman of the past, it, it, it brings forth when my aunts used to go berry picking with us and tell us stories. And, and my dad would give the oldest one some tobacco to present to Mother Earth. And the aunts, she'd make us reach and we'd all hands and, and she'd say, but you know what? We have to pray for good berries and we have to pray for success. We can still have a good time. You don't have to look at this as going out having to search for food. This is something that's necessary for wintertime, which was really true. Um, and along the way, we might check the snares. So there was when Violet talked about that, I could still see myself in the bush in Manitoba <laughs> looking for the snares and and all the berries and the, cause our raspberries were a little higher, but the strawberries were closer to the ground and they were in June. So every berry had its time and uh, every wild fruit has its time. And it, it was beautiful. And uh, I used to fish and skin fish and prepare it, but, I can't even touch it because of some medication I had through some serious surgery in the past. And, um, but my water, my mouth waters when I see my husband eat a, oh, especially when he eats some nice fish that, oh. but him and my daughter go out and enjoy it together. So that way I'm staying away for safety sake. But all these things about Mother Earth and, and the respect and starting with a smudge, we always used to start our morning with a smudge before we went to work in the barn, before we went to milk cows, before uh, there was, a, the smudge was very important to us. Not all Métis smudge, our culture, our language, I speak my language, but that's because we were able to be on the farm and, and be able to use our language. We weren't allowed to at the convent to use our language. And uh, you weren't allowed publicly to use your language. But today, the grandmothers of today, just think what our grandmothers prepared for us. So it's our turn to prepare for the next future grandmothers and mothers and, and uh, their children. So women, this is a special day, a day that our grandmothers would have thanked a million times because they didn't live close together, maybe five, six miles apart. And all these mothers, mostly where I come from were farmers. So you never had the time, maybe once a month you got together which was a precious time. But we had a river that went through our farm. So um, it, it, we were also blessed there. There's many things. So when Violet talked about the bush and the, the snares and that, oh, wow. You know, you check the snares, kids, when you're out there picking berries, check them on the way back as well. You know, so... It, it, it's a joy. It's so, and this is how we heal. We heal our mind and our heart and our body stays healthy from eating food and to eat as often like the three meals. If it, and there's a lot of people didn't have the money to eat the three meals. Um, often my dad would say to a lot, of people that didn't live far, come to the garden, come and pick whatever you want from the garden. We had a five acres of potatoes, go pick some potatoes. You need potatoes, go pick them. You need carrots, we got three acres, go pick them. For us, it was good because we didn't have to pick all that and clean it and 
put it in a pile and get it ready for the root cellar. Um, so we thought the more they come and pick, the less we have to do. But that was we did we did it in a selfish way as a child, but our parents did it in a loving way to help. So that the grandmothers of the day helped us to be the grandmothers we are today, and hopefully the we can guide the mother, grandmothers of the future. And thank you to all. Thank you, Edme. You've touched on some beautiful things and I believe it was even brought up in our comments, how they just love hearing about the sharing of food through community. And that's such an important way to connect with each other, with the land and also a way to heal, like you said, our minds and bodies. And yeah, it's super important. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to move on to another grandmother. So I'd like to uh, welcome our third grandmother and elder, Vinya Van Overdyke, to, to speak to this question. So Vinya is a Salto Cree elder who, like all elders here, has participated in the ARPA Elder Capacity Building Culture Camp. So Vinya, how does your community heal through connection? Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, could you, I uh, I came here to Calgary in 1968, so I uh, uh, I really enjoy um, everybody that uh, I've met all through these years. Um, I think through celebration. When we uh, um, when we go to a uh, a celebration, we uh, we meet a lot of uh, uh, different people. But my uh, I think my main job I I call it my job because the creator asked me to to take care of his children. So, uh, and that's what I do. So with a connection, I, I hold uh, uh, the knowledge of sacred circle, a uh, healing circles. So uh, my, uh, my father used to tell me how it originated was through um, the community coming together where everybody would, uh, in the community uh, would come into one huge dwelling and everybody would sit around in a circle. The women, men, young people, and the children, they would all sit in a circle and, uh, and share. And that's where the talking stick comes in. You have the talking stick and only the person that holds that talking stick can speak. And at that, uh, when you uh, come in there, uh, the purpose of the sacred circle is for individuals who are on a healing journey or a healing path, either from trauma or addictions or any kind of a recovery. So it gave you a chance to be in a safe environment with all of your family, your your uh, extended family, so that you had all that support, so that when you spoke, when you released something that was preventing you from healing, because as human beings, we love to hold on to our or secrets that are making us sick. 
and we hold it dearly. So when I have my healing circles, that's what I I do. I uh, I have everybody have a chance to speak and release, heal, and talk. When you talk about something that is bothering you, it's no longer a secret. So, when you talk about the problem that you have, you will be discover that there are so many other people in that same circle who are going through the same thing. When I started my healing, I was really surprised when I, when there were so many people that came forward and said the same thing happened to them. And it, all of a sudden I was not alone. And after the, after the ceremony, we, uh, we became um, friends where we could uh, talk to each other, go meet somewhere, eat, and, and share. And throughout the years, I, uh, it took me 10 years to heal. But every time we came together, we became stronger. And so uh, there are different kinds of healing circles. There are different kinds of circles where um, where we we uh, get together and uh, and do this. So after the circle, we usually have something to eat so that we could uh, um, kind of um, um, uh, as uh, contraries used to say, now we're going to eat everything that we heard and then purge it out. Jimmy Gritch. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Thank you, Vinya. Um, that was beautiful. And, oh, I think we're, oh, there we go. <laughs> um, no, thank you, Vinya. That was beautiful. And I think it speaks volumes when we acknowledge that we can all talk about things together because it's likely that there are other people who are maybe going through something similar. And when you can come together, you're less alone in that moment. And like you said, you can become stronger as a whole and as a group. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I'd like to move on and welcome back uh, Elder Doreen Healy to speak to the same question. And as I mentioned earlier, Doreen is a Blackfoot elder who is the originator of these wonderful grandmother circles. So Doreen, please, please let us know how does your community or how do you heal through connection? And you're on mute. <laughs> I never learn. <laughs> um, thank you, um, Rihanna. And it's like I said before, it's it's such a pleasure to be part of these uh, grandmother's circles. Um, we've got so many other elders that we could ask to be part of this and they would give such beautiful stories too, but we can only pick <laughs> four at a time. Sometimes we're lucky we have five. But anyways, um, healing through connection. Wow, that's healing is such a huge subject and so crucial. So my focus uh, is on women for this morning. Uh, like women are the soul of the family and the home. Our ancestors held women in high esteem because they were seen as, 
uh, they were seen powerful and close to creator who gave them the power to bear children. Not only do women bear children, they bring to the home love, strength, education, and, and today leadership. They are the ones who keep the family and home together. It's so important. And we have an obligation to respect and value all these unique roles and gifts we each bring into creation as women and to maintain our roles with honor and dignity. Today, the role of women have expanded to include not only running the home and raising the family, but also have a full-time job to help with the high cost of living. This uh, multitasking for me is so important and the reason why we should listen to our elders, our grandmothers who have gone through life and have so much experience and can provide advice and guidance through their stories. Being connected to a community, which could be your family, your place of work, your community where you live, it could be whatever you choose it to be. We are not meant to be alone, which is another reason it is important to belong. My community is with our uh, elders circle, the knowledge keepers, which I mentioned before, uh, here in the city of Calgary. The elders role is so important, which is to work with the next generations to prepare them to be the next elders by sharing their stories and their wisdom. Our grandmothers are the healers, uh, whether it's emotional, spiritual, and time, times, and sometimes physical. And like uh, Vinnie said, that she holds these healing circles. So that's just an example of how grandmothers are healers. Even though our generation of elders, our grandmothers, experienced residential school which caused a great deal of stress and trauma. They are very resilient and through traditions and ceremony passed on to them by, from their parents and grandparents have helped them to be able to pass on their knowledge. For me, that's where my healing comes from, listening and being with the elders, the grandmothers and participating in the ceremonies. And doing smudge and praying, praying a lot. There are so many different ways of healing, but what you, whatever you choose, uh, believe in it and cherish the time you spend with grandmothers. It is so important, the role that the elders play in the process of healing. I'm referencing grandmothers and women a lot. And that's because it is the, like, uh, Brianna said it's the Nash International Women's Day, and I want to show my respect to all of the beautiful women. And just one other quick uh, healing I wanted to throw in. It's the uh, grounding. It's another form of healing, and it's that, that is connecting to Mother Earth. To maintain that flow of energy that goes through our body, coming from the Mother Earth and through our bodies and back to Mother Earth. And that takes, uh, it cleans our whole system. And uh, because right today, uh, what we wear on our shoes, that cuts off that natural flow to get rid of any negative energies that uh, are in our bodies and it'll flow right back to Mother Earth and clean energy comes through. But with the shoes that we have today, that blocks that natural flow. So that negative energy sits in our system and studies are saying that that's what causes diseases. We all need to keep that flow going so that uh, we can clean our systems also. Um, in the winter, we can, uh, well, in the summertime, just go barefoot and stand in the, on the grass for 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening. And in the winter, 
if you've got your moccasins or thick woolen socks, just stand on the sidewalk. Just make sure it's cleaned up. The snow is cleaned up. And uh, that few minutes is uh, going to do a lot of good in the morning and in, in the evening. So just wanted to also share that how beautiful Mother Earth is, just like all our grandmothers. So thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Doreen. That was wonderful. And I love the mention of the role of women and, and women elders and the importance that they bring to communities and to healing. So that's actually perfect because today is International Women's Day as we all have talked about. And so I'd like to build off of Doreen's comments there and uh, keep that momentum going. So I'd like to welcome you grandmothers to speak to another kind of topic um, on the importance of women elders in your community. How are they important? Or do you wanna just share anything more about uh, just the women in your life, in your communities? So I'm gonna open that up to uh, Edme if you'd like to share anything more. Oh, <laughs> she's coming off mute. <laughs> My helper. There we go. Thank you. Oh, there's so much sharing. You know, it's, it's um, RPA Janet has connected us in such a loving way back then and still is, and she's a woman. And uh, these are roles that women have to help us connect together and to share from our mind to our heart and, and our past and, and from the love, the respect, the humility. Sometimes you feel humiliated for saying something or someone says something without wanting to humiliate you but they don't know how to approach you. So, and I think we've all had those moments of embarrassment as a woman. Um, but when we do it with love and honesty and courage, I think these are all words and, and from our ceremonies, our culture, our language, I think we are learning to be able to share like our grandmothers used to share in a different way. But although it was different, it was still necessary to pass this beauty of being a woman. And to, if you respect yourself, you will respect others. Uh, when one thing I, I was told by a lot of the elders of the time, they'd come to visit and they'd say, learn to respect yourself. When you respect yourself, you respect all others. If you don't res when you say something nasty about someone or don't like something, and you, you may say something that's not very nice, just remember that's no respect to yourself. It's not showing how to love. It's not showing how to care. So I think through, through whether it's at a ceremony or whether it, it, it has a gathering, uh, we always gathered, the men always sat on one side, the woman, my mom would start at the middle and then all the girls around and the children in the center, it was always in a circle. And, um, and all the other grandmothers that were there and, and uh, they all had something to share. And it was a beautiful thing to be able to hear them always be encouraging in the way we approach people. How we connect with each and every one of, of us will connect in a different way. But if we connect with love, there is never no bad ending to that there's always when the mind tells the heart that other person could be hurting and all you need to say is i care i'm here 
And I think with our circle of beautiful elders here and grandmothers, I think I found that with it, it started with Reg and Rose starting something and and Rose was always uh, so encouraging and and always, you know, we connected as this is my sister, this is not a stranger, this is my sister. And would if we could connect all women of the world, right now I think when we do say and ask for a blessing, we need to remember where the war and torn country, what these mothers and grandmothers are going through. What we need to remember them in love and respect and what we've all gone through in the past, know our past, don't live there live for today because tomorrow is not promised to us but be prepared if today is yesterday's tomorrow so we will always have a tomorrow in our life we will always have someone vinya i must say this the first time i met you i was kind of shy and you said you'll do better next time so hopefully i'm doing better this time <laughs> I was so shy, I hardly would talk, and they had to pull it out of me. So I'm hoping I'm doing better to being able to share. Thank you, Vinya, for that, the encouragement of the time. And to all of you grandmothers, there's so much love to share with everyone. And Matt, you did a great job this morning. And Janet, thank you for connecting us. The connection and Brianna, the name Morin, there was many Morins back home and a lot of Metis Morins and, and uh, some could speak their language because they were hiding in the bush and we could use the language. And some were right in the middle of Winnipeg where they didn't have a chance, but they're still in my heart today. So when I heard your name, Brianna, it was like, I don't really know this young lady physically, but I know her with my heart. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Edme. You're going to make me tear up, and I think you're probably making many others tear up behind the screens today. Um, but you had such beautiful wisdom, such beautiful words to lead with love, and a lot of people are sharing that in the comments right now. And um we really appreciate what you said about if we connect with love there there really isn't a bad uh ending to that so i think a lot of us agree with you today and thank you for sharing um i'd like to pass it over to vinya if you'd like to share anything about uh, the role of women elders in your community there's so many so many elders that uh um that are no longer with us that were so powerful i learned from quite a few of them because uh they accepted me as an elder when i was in my 30s uh, from all the um the life that i had gone through so um it's uh I continue to share with uh, to the young women that uh, you know how strong, especially when uh, you see, you know it. When I see the the young women who are out there right now, who are working in the communities, helping their their. Um, their relatives and strangers and helping them grow. All those young teachers. Um, I'm currently working with, uh, with two young women that are working at Aboriginal Features that are just amazing. I'd like, I want to say Leanne keep it up because 
you're making a difference. And also, I uh, want to say, you know, my colleagues uh, in the, all the women in our elders group, everybody has so much knowledge that they, they are going to share in our new, new future facilities where we will be able to do this in person. So I also want to say um, you're doing a good job, Brianna, Janice, and for getting us all together. It's always, I always have a good laugh with, with Janice, with, uh, she's so bubbly. I think uh, she's uh, an amazing leader too. She's going to make a very good elder eventually when she's ready to go, to take on that job too. And uh, and me, yes, I remember all the. I think we were both the same same level where we were just going out in public and being able to speak as uh, some of the elders um, will remember me as a as a very shy young woman who couldn't even speak very loud or make my voice heard it was, uh, and they keep on, kept on telling me, oh, go up there. We want to hear your voice. And I keep saying that to all the young women. You have a voice. Let's hear it. Hey, hey. Hey, hi, Vinya. Thank you. Man, I, I really love what's going on right now. I'm really just witnessing each other and what we need to do going forward is just amplify our voices, but complement each other and encourage each other to just be the best women that we can be, the best people we can be. And I'm, I'm seeing that play out right now. And it's just really, really nice to hear and see. Um, so thank you, Vinya, for sharing. Um, Violet, I see you're back, and I would like to turn it over to you to share um, your thoughts on the importance of women elders in your community. And you're on mute. <laughs> oh, almost there. Maybe, maybe we'll come. Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> very, very, <laughs> very carefully. <laughs> yes. You know, in our community or in all, like here, I, I can't, there is no vocabulary that would describe the valuable, valuable you know, information, the valuable, to me, it's like gold. It's, 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 it's something to, to treasure sacred forever and ever. You know, they are the backbone. They are, um, you know, go to for anybody. And for myself too, I'm still learning. I still got lots to learn. However, when I need to learn or to ask something, I always go to the elders also. Because like I say, I don't have all the answers. That is my support. That is my communication. And I really, really value that. And for 
in our community, you know, it's it's like the knowledge, the knowledge that they, while they are here, the knowledge that they share, you know, is beyond beyond the uh, dictionary and stuff because you know it's just it's just like I say I I have no words you know in in how how valuable how like I say it, it is they're like gold um, and you know and that's how we learn that's that's how we all learn that's how you learn also as I can't, I can't think of your name, Brianna, yeah. It's like words like ho'a, words like okay, you know, like I'm, I'm, you know, and dance in Cree, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really great to be in this circle, in this circle and to share and to kind of, you know, to continue supporting each other, all of us, it's International Women's Day. Wow. How blessings to all of you. You know, from the grandmothers to the mothers to the great, and I'm a great grandmother. Oh, it'll be the third one. Can you imagine? My great granddaughter, the third one is coming. So like I say, it's just blessings to all, all the women throughout the world, all the women that are, you know, in the, you know, the mothers, the grandmothers in a war-torn country, you know, you watch the media and blessings and prayers to all, prayers to all the mothers, grandmothers throughout the world, again, they, because we, they are the pillars, the pillars of, of, the whole world and stuff. So thank you, thank you, Brianna, for for allowing me to share a few words, Masi Chop. Thank you. Thank you, Violet. Everything you said, and it's just all hitting home today. And I I don't know why I feel a little emotional today with it being International Women's Day and just getting to hear all your perspectives and wisdom. And so many people in our comments, again, are um, just elated with the wisdom that you're sharing today. Um, yeah, and I think, too, with what everything that you're speaking to, it does draw on that importance of us needing to be aware of the um, missing and murdered women, Indigenous women and girls. Um, I might welcome my colleague, Janet, to uh, speak to this in a moment here. Um, but I also would like to just briefly welcome uh, Doreen if she wanted to just add on anything to this question of the importance of women elders in the community. Doreen, do you have anything else? Not, not really. I just want to say I totally agree with all of what the elders have already, our grandmothers have already uh, shared. That love is so important, uh, not only to love someone, but to love yourself. I guess that's, that's where it all has to start. And coming from the heart, when you share, <laughs> you just saw by do a flip. <laughs> um, so it's, it's so important. Um, as they are, our grandmothers have spoken about with the love to show, to love ourselves. And then that love then just flows to your, uh, your children, your families and your communities. So it's, uh, I just wanted to say, I, want, I really agree with what Ed May also talked about for showing the love. And our elders are so, um, as I said before, they're so resilient. A lot of our elders, our grandmothers that are here today in this generation, our generation, we've all gone through residential school and we've experienced all that abuse at the hands of the uh, church people, which were supposed to be looking after us. 
but our elders are so, uh, our grandmothers are very strong and resilient. And through, like I said before, it's through ceremony and listening to our, their grand, our grandparents, our parents, uh, and taking part in ceremonies that it's, to me, it, it, whenever you do uh, the smudge and the prayer, it just gives you that energy and that connection to the creator. And you, it just gives you that strength to you to face the day. And I learned again, I learned that from being part of this elders knowledge keepers. Um, it, that's where I get all my uh, education. My whole life after I left residential school at the age of 14, I've, I've been in the Western world to, to survive. But thank goodness to Dr. Croshu and his wife, Rose, who told me it's time to come and learn about your culture. You've been in the Western world for long enough. And thank goodness at the time I meet with the, I'm in a meeting with the elders, um, I learn so much. We are so full of wisdom. And they're the, they're, they are such a key in the whole healing process. Like even just to sit, sit across the table from an elder or get, get a hug from one of the elders, you feel that genuine love that's coming from them. It is just so beautiful. So it's such a pleasure to, when we meet in person, which, which we can't do since COVID got here, uh, but I hardly wait till we can all get together again. And, um, and now I'm rambling, so I better, <laughs> I just wanna say thank you again, uh, Janet, uh, for allowing us to get together and Brianna, Matt, and all of the people behind the scenes. And thank you everyone that's in the audience for taking the time uh, to listen to our beautiful grandmothers and what their advice and their guide of sharing their wisdom with you guys. All we want to do is help to make your journey down this path in life to be a little easier. So reach out to the elders when you have a chance. They're always ready to help. I mean, it just, it, it just makes us feel so good when we're able to help someone. So thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Absolutely. I think what you said about love being so important and it's important to not only love someone, but love yourself. And that is then able to trickle down into our communities. I think if anything, that should be a lot of our takeaways today, but there's a lot of other takeaways today too. Um, so thank you. That's beautiful. And I'd like to just briefly welcome Janet. Janet actually is gonna be making an appearance today after all. So Janet, please take it away. If I can help myself, there's a webinar, I better be on it, even though I don't want to be. But, um, so, Nistawana, okay, Nistawana Gok, Amska Pitaki. So, I just said hello. Uh, my name in uh, my spiritual name, which was given to me by um, John Chief Moon Sr., is Southern Eagle Woman. So, I just wanted to acknowledge that I'm here too in Mohinsis, which is the um traditional territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy, because we do need to always acknowledge the space and the place and that connection to people that we were in. And I just was just saying, um, messaging Brianna, that I think one important thing as it is, um, we're listening to the grandmothers and it is International Women's Day, that I challenge all of you to go and check out um, the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls Movement. And I think it's so important, as um, Elder Doreen was saying, and all um, the grandmothers have all alluded to like their past, the importance it is to um, move with love as we also move towards a, a better cause. And that is championing the rights of Indigenous women and girls um, and all, all faces um, here in Canada. And just know that that is all of our jobs. And as we hear the grandmothers, we all need to move forward in this way to do this work together as a community. And that's a key point of connection. If you're looking for advocacy, 
and the power of your voice as a woman, I think that's something to pick up on. So I just wanted to say that and to thank the grandmothers for their beautiful blessing. It's always a joy to hear um, their original languages. It's not something that we all get to hear all the time, especially in prayer. So thank you for that as well. I love you guys. You're amazing. And um, it, this is making my day. So thank you so much for that. And I'll turn it back to you, Brianna. Thank you, Janet. No, I appreciate what you have to share. And yeah, I agree. It's, it's a time for us to amplify women's voices, women's history, everything, those types of movements. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a very important day and important work beyond just today. So thank you, Janet, and thank you, grandmothers. Um, we're kind of closing in a little bit on time, so I kind of wanted to welcome if either of you just had a final closing thought that you would like to share before I um, wrap things up. So I will turn it over to uh, Vinya. Vinya, do you have any closing thoughts that you'd like to share with us today? <laughs> I would say uh, uh, you all rock. <laughs> it's uh, you're uh, it's it's amazing to see you all beautiful faces and all the audience and uh, have a very good or amazing Women's Day today. Thank you, Vinya. I will pass it on over to uh, Edme. Do you have any final closing remarks you'd like to share just from the day? Um, it was just wonderful to be all together. And, and for those attending the whole conference, you may not use some of this today, tomorrow, but maybe in a month from now, maybe in a year from now, you'll say, I've learned something at that conference. Today, I'm using it at work. Today, I'm using it with um, supporting someone else, supporting another uh, woman, supporting many women maybe in your job. Maybe you're a social worker and you have many social workers to talk to and uh, what you've learned at the conference you will use and you'll say oh that Brianna Morin she led all these elders that were just loving her and she loved them and that you know what it, it, it's a power of love and, and Doreen to have the grand, grandmother's circle that's an honor to have you there to support us and to be there if we need to reach out. And um, I've been wanting to call back and, and say to you, Doreen, I've been adding, as I promised, extra in my smudge for you. Uh, as we know, when we lose someone, it's most difficult. Most of it. When we lost our son, 2007, most difficult thing. So for those of you that have lost family members, my heart, my love, and the creator's love and direction. And to all those at the conference, may you just cherish these moments of being women. You are you are powerful you have power you have love you have all the the beautiful thing that to share with one another and it is from love to humility to the truth to the honesty to the wisdom that you have and all the courage it takes sometime to come forth with it so to all of you and janet again to RPA, thank you for getting us all together. And if I miss someone, I apologize. Uh, and Matt, you're a brave boy to be with all us women. I will tell you that. Uh, a, a, a big hug to you from my heart to yours. Thank you.
thank you all. Much love. Oh, thank you, Edmay. Again, I'm holding back tears today, ladies. I really am trying not to lose it in front of everybody. <laughs> Um, I do appreciate the, the humor that you also bring. I think that's a really important element into the overall feeling of healing and connection. So thank you. Um, I will pass it over to Violet. If you have any final closing remarks for the day, please take it away. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I lost me. I can't see anyone, but I I pressed something and I unmuted. So I guess I'm okay. Uh, again, like man, this is thank you for the invite. Uh, that was awesome. And like Doreen saying, you know, like I just like I learn. I'm still learning. I you know I do appreciate all of you, all of you, and many blessings to all of you during these sessions and stuff for the next few days. My blessings, blessings to all and all will be well. And as we speak, you know, Edme, I just got a text just now. Somebody from back home that I know very closely, a very, very dear cousin just passed on. So prayers to Miranda, who's just left us just now. You know, so again, their prayers to all of us and continue supporting each other. Masi amasi nesvan sindun sinek e. Thank you. Thank you, Violet. I'm very sorry about that. Um, I'm glad that this has been able to be a space for all of us to heal and connect in that regard. Um, I'll quickly pass it over to Doreen for any final closing remarks, and then we will be on, on our way to wrap up this beautiful grandmother circle. I finally learned to unmute before it was my turn. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you, and all the beautiful women out there, stay strong. We are beautiful, so full of love, Never stop being yourself. Be true to yourself. We need we need all the women to to keep to stay together. Be strong. Don't fight amongst each other or feel that to, you need to compete. Work together. That is so important to work together, and that's one way of getting things done and for us to maintain that strength and that to keep pushing and sharing the love that's out there, that the, the world is right now is so in such turmoil because people are losing love. They are so competitive. They just want power. We need to stick together, be strong as women and show them that love is going to conquer all this turmoil in the world. We need to look after our children. So be strong and be happy. Thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you, Doreen. I couldn't agree more. There's always strength in numbers and make sure that we find joy along the way as well. Um, so thank you. I, I want to just share one comment that I'm seeing um, from one of our Choose Well champions, Michelle Geislinger. She says, my dear grandmothers, we learn so much every time you speak. Thank you for the privilege of your knowledge and love. I have never had the gift of knowing my grandmothers. You have filled my circle. So just wanted to pass that along. I thought that was very sweet. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. Great to have you here. Um, all right, well, that that does wrap up the uh, grandmother circle. So I just, again, really want to thank you, grandmothers, for sharing your stories, your experiences, your wisdom with us today, and for starting this symposium off in such a good way. So many people have said thank you. This is a great way to start the symposium. 
Um, it's always an honor hearing from you and we will make sure that you do receive your gifts and tobacco once the symposium is over and I'm sure it'll be Janet being the one delivering that to you so you can expect that afterwards. And today was just really key in highlighting the importance of connection and how our lives can truly change for the better if we if we make space for connecting with others, ourselves, the community and the land. Women have so much to contribute to this world and it's important that we continue to amplify, amplify women's voices on days like today.